The Nikon Revolution and the Razer Raiju are the two professional grade controllers officially licensed for use with the PS4. We've pitted them against each other across a range of categories like button feel, button placement and the accessories that you get. Hopefully you'll get a good feel for both controllers and work out if one of them is the one for you. Now the Nikon's made a really good move by keeping the left thumbstick where Sony has had the D-pad since the PS1. The right stick has a rounded logo on the top and I found that got quite slippery after a little while. Razer has gone for the conventional DualShock joystick placement with the Raiju. They've also included removable silicon covers if you want a different tactile feel to the standard rubber surface. The Revolution's joystick placement is superior and it's something Xbox owners have had forever. The Nikon's four programmable buttons are all underneath and sit almost flush with the grips. Two of them are raised to make hitting them easier, but I found they needed a more forceful push which shifts your hands away from the triggers. I couldn't reliably hit M1 and M2. The Raiju also has four macros, two on the underside of the controller, and two are located right next to the triggers. They're all really easy to hit, and if you wanted to, you can even remove the triggers underneath, leaving the button flush with the controller. Accessing those additional buttons is also way easier on the Raiju. They've got a quick control panel on the bottom that lets you assign those macros on the fly, switch profiles, mute your mic, and adjust the volume. The Revolution has four profiles where the Raiju can only store two custom settings. So in the face button face off, I've got to go with the Nacon. I just really like the size and the feel. I thought the Razer buttons were a bit small and a bit clicky. It's really interesting because I really like the mechanical keyboard feel and sound of it, but also the, the fact that the macros are so much more accessible means you don't really need larger face buttons. Dividing access to four extra buttons across four fingers also makes a lot more sense than two. After a few hours of practice, I'd completely replace my use of the face buttons with the macros, leaving my right thumb free to continue to aim at targets. You can also turn on hair triggering and reduce the amount of play in the triggers by locking them off. The Revolution requires a dedicated app. The advantage is you get four separate profiles and a lot more customizability in terms of sensitivity on your triggers and your thumbsticks, but you have to put the effort in to get it working properly. The Revolution also gives you one other way to customize the controller. It's got internal channels that let you add weight so you can get it feeling right in your hands. But there's just something about the shoulder buttons on the Revolution and the grip that has it feeling a little bit off. One of the things I find really crummy about the Nacon is it doesn't have an app for Mac computers, so I can't actually do any of the customization. On the other hand, customizing controls on the Raiju is super easy. You hold down the assignment button, the macro, and the macro you want to map to it. The controller vibrates to confirm and that's it. We've got to give this one to the Raiju, right? Like being able to map jumping, switching weapons, reloading to your trigger fingers, it just feels so much more natural. Both controllers are corded. The Raiju connected via micro USB and the Revolution uses a five pin, which probably explains the superior audio quality in the Nacon. The Nacon is just super clear. I had to turn the volume down because chat was just too good. Yeah, the Raiju, it was a real letdown, especially in comparison to the Nacon. The unit we tested, it was worse than a standard PS4 controller. The Raiju silicon grips, removable triggers, and thumbstick covers make it the better built controller. It also includes a hard shell travel case, while the Revolution only comes with a soft carry bag. The Raiju is the pricier controller, but those extras make a decent case for paying that little bit more. So I think it's obvious, I'm completely sold on the Raiju. The buttons feel better, the macros are easier to access, uh, it's just, it's the controller I kept going back to. I'm, I'm inclined to agree. I mean, it's more expensive, but it just felt better in the hand the first time I picked it up. But it's not perfect. The audio quality was disappointing, and two profiles felt restrictive if playing multiple games. While we preferred the Raiju, the Nacon does have a lot going for it. It's a controller for someone who wants to tinker and get it working exactly how they want, and a few of our colleagues and friends were swearing by it.